<laughs> interrupt our program to bring you the show. Hey everybody, how's it going? Hope the intro didn't really go go uh, as poorly as it looked on our side. But welcome to another edition of Super Desperation Radio, where today we're going to be all business. We're not going to goof off, and we're going straight into uh, DreamHack Street Fighter Five. Guys, guys, did any of you watch? It was. It was good. I watched a bunch of it. It was amazing. I thought that it was probably so. So obviously, I was at DreamHack last year, and the amount of improvements that they made just to the overall schedule and program were very obvious from someone that's behind the scenes. And it must have been great for the people who were watching too. There was actually an audience this time, and they seemed really excited. So um, definitely looking like more of a complete FGC tournament for them on that end. Uh, definitely like seeing that, and obviously, way more talent. Way more talent showed up this year. Oh, yeah. Very good well, sign. It was a premiere event this year, right? Yes. Okay. And... Yeah, that was people from all over the goddamn world there. <clears throat> I think, like, um... There was a couple people there that, like, honestly, I don't think they've even competed in that region before. The Texas region. Mm-hmm. So, for a lot of those guys, it was, like, the first time being out there. And so, Austin must have been pretty cool for them. Um, yeah. Honestly, though, like, probably the thing that stuck out the most was the talent on the mic and i mean i don't think that this like you know flies in the face of anybody else but honestly man like ultra chen being on top eight was like it was great i loved like every minute of it dude it was just like oh this is like clicking everything synergy chemistry everything was great so really happy to see those guys working a top eight again um have it feels like i haven't it's been like almost a year since i've seen it happen even though i know it hasn't been nearly that long it just kind of yeah, felt sure. like hit you like the cold water. Yeah, I'm sure it's happened, and we just forgot. But I, it was it was nice. I I told James last night it was a nice, it was nice seeing the two again. I I love the Steves on top eight. I love the mixture of all four of the Ultra people on top eight. Dave and James back on together was was cool, and they both did a really good job. And David's hair is amazing. Oh yeah, throwing that out. I just thought love it me. was a little bit weird because I haven't really seen. James and David do a lot of commentary lately. Mm-hmm. So it was sort of like, oh, oh, they're doing top eight. Okay. Because they, I mean, they haven't really been traveling a lot. Uh, James has, but David hasn't as much. So I was surprised. Yeah, like David's, um, he wasn't in NCR this year. Um, he hardly ever really goes to NCR. Um, but he, like you said, he hasn't been traveling a lot. But I honestly felt like they, they, they kept the comfortableness of the duo, which is something that as a guy who works with a guy like, you know, metaphysics and the fact that me and metaphysics are able to jump back into our old antics, it's just really nice to see that from another duo like that. So, you know, good shit for them. It was really enjoyable to watch top eight from their vantage point. And they worked well with everybody else, too. So mm-hmm. it, was just, it, it's a, it was a good mixture of people, basically, overall. Really, really good event. Another uh, good mix... So I'm gonna go with the good mix and the bad mix. I did not like uh, Curry and James because Curry got to got got James to do something horrible on stream, and uh, Steve and we're gonna James, talk about his dad. We're gonna talk about. James we're, we're not talking about it, all right? We're, we're, not, really we're gonna, gonna, gonna talk about it. Was, look, uh, well, we're gonna talk about it because when I picked up my niece from school today, uh, there were signs all over the place. I said "dab," and it says and it stands for "don't allow bullying." And I, like, <laughs> I get it. I understand now. I got you. I just, I just felt like it was James just going "hello, fellow kids," and then he hit the dab. (laughs) Just freak me up, family. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, I totally missed it. Tasty Steve and uh, Eli Curry. They, they were. That was a really good combination. I like them. That was. I actually missed them. When did they do commentary? Uh, they didn't do. They did. No, obviously. 
they did a mixture of people. Like they had Curry on for a good while. I think they. I don't know if he did it with Sajam or David, okay. but he was he was there midday Saturday. I believe. Yeah, because I was I was coming in and out Saturday, so I caught a mixture of people. I caught Jane, Eli, like you said. I caught. Mm-hmm. I think I caught Sajam and David. I can't remember who all I saw, but. I know. Con- I, in terms of the quality of play, I think yeah, yeah. dude, dude, quality dude. of play was amazing. Holy shit! So I like I was actually talking to a buddy of mine about that, and he just like he he basically said, you know, Street Fighter Five is a great game to watch, but frust- frustrating as hell to play. And you could totally see it on like everybody's faces that whole day. You know, like even Shao Hai was feeling it against the. Uh, Yo, that's the stress, dude. Like the fucking eye roll was like, ah, uh, you know. It was, Beautiful, and that's just that's what I, I don't I don't I don't see people do that at that level. I don't see people get that frustrated. He's just like yeesh. I really I really like though. I think I think you're muted. Walk. Test, test, hello. There you go. Oh, there you go. There he is. I no, saw your lips don't... moving. I saw your lips moving, yeah. and I was like, what the fuck. <laughs> No, Dude, I think audio died all. for all. I couldn't hear anybody else for a second. Yeah, uh, every every single one of us died. Yeah, I apologize for the technical difficulties. Really weird. Uh, really weird. Uh, this is new. Discord usually does well for us. <laughs> it's like we're going back to Skype, guys. Oh, oh no, 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 we are not doing that. No. Nah. Uh, well, anyway, I was just saying that, like, you know, the whole the whole experience of watching these guys play Street Fighter Five, and you know, watching people lose matches and be visibly frustrated by it was just like. Nice. You know, it's nice. You say what you will about Street Fighter Five, but it's actually bringing out emotions in people. You mm-hmm. know, and a lot of people were afraid that it wasn't going to do that. A lot of people were just afraid to be like, "Oh, the only emotion it's going to bring out is people are going to be upset that it sucks." You know? Yeah. But people were actually upset that they're not winning. Mm-hmm. That's good. Like, <laughs> that's what I was saying, people love the Haitani thinking face. They just cut it to him and he's just like. <laughs> <laughs> And then uh, at the very end, after Punk won, he was just like, he heaved such a heavy sigh of relief. Like, oh, man. They do that shit anymore, huh? Like, yeah. Like, he got close down there at the end. Well, Punk, Yeah, Punk seemed to take it all very seriously once he was in Losers. He didn't dick around. He didn't teabag a bunch of people like he normally does. And he seemed to, he didn't seem to be having fun with it like he normally, like he did at, say, NCR. NCR, you see he was a big goofball. It was fun to watch. Uh, Dreamhack, he was more like, you know what, all business, I'm gonna fuck you up, I'm gonna beat the shit out of you, I'm gonna win this tournament, I'm gonna take this money, I don't care where you're from, I don't care who you are, you know who the fuck I am? I'm a punk, bitch. And then he fucked people up. It was great. I liked it. Riddle could learn from... I think we're getting that... <laughs> wow, yeah. I think we're getting to that part of the year where you have to kind of stop joking around. Evo is two months away now yeah two months mm-hmm. away people points are gonna start adding up and that's like the biggest point nest of the entire season so i mean it's it's time to like start taking this like you know you're getting paid to be there anyway right don't look an asshole up there um yeah. now go to, getting back to punk though like i want to say like the highlight for me for him was just his ability to not like crumble in like the most ridiculous circumstances Obviously, we all saw the drops. We saw the immaculate cool. super drops. Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah. And we saw how Haitini reacted to that. And he was just kind of like, ah, I don't know what you say, you know? Yeah. And Punk, on the other hand, was like, huh, I dropped my super. Okay. There goes my enemy. Yeah, that was definitely a scramble at the very end. And boy, was it. Uh, didn't look the, the greatest, but that was like. <laughs> They're like, oh no, oh no, okay, he was the super. All right, I got the combo. This is gonna win it. I didn't time it. Like, oh my god, it didn't hit him. Oh no, okay, oh, now we like... both have no meter. What is going on? And they're just kind of looking at each other, and it was, it was so funny because it was such a different moment in time because they both were just not playing how they normally would. Not necessarily with the drops, but after that, they just both didn't understand what was going on and looked like. Like the state of realization had set in that they could lose at any second at this point, and they didn't know what could happen. Suddenly, the online mode kicked in, and it's just like, oh shit, the warping is real. And... 
Yeah. What was the <laughs> final score of the grand finals anyway? I think it was 2 2. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it came down to. Uh, so Punk reset it, obviously 3 0. And then uh, it came down to the last round, I believe. Or no, yeah. it's not the last round, it's the last match because that drop, the two drops. Holy shit. Yeah. And Punk, like, he scrambled, but he did it. He, he recovered in a way where you couldn't tell if he had even fell apart, you know? Mm hmm. Like. Like, Marn had a fucking tweet, like, afterwards, where he said, after he hit the button that was supposed to activate the super for Karin, he, he, like, put the, he put the pad down or some shit like that, because he thought he had yeah. it, and then he whiffed, and he immediately picked it back up, it was like, oh, shit, you know? And Marn was but, like, if that had been a stick, he'd been fucked, he would have lost. Yes, yes. <laughs> pad and for life, you know baby. What? I, I, I agree with that, because resetting a stick on your lap is different than just grabbing a pad, but mm -hmm. still, that's... Whatever. Never ever do that. Make sure you you confirm <laughs> that your opponent is dead. I don't care how good you are. Boy, I don't care who you are. That is a. Uh, Can I tell you? That is uh, some. What are you getting up for? That is some. Uh, some Evo Guilty Gear. <laughs> there's, a, there's a long list of legends. The band is on the field. <laughs> <laughs> the band is on the field. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, uh, DreamHack was great, and I think the next premiere event, at least here in the States, is going to be Combo Breaker. We didn't get any character reveal. Of, I guess a bunch of people were expecting it at DreamHack, but most likely we'll get something at Combo Breaker, because last year, I believe that's when they debuted a Booki at Combo Breaker, right? Uh, well, we're going to get the debut before May 11th, because the new character is going to be in that, in the second beta. Oh, oh so it, it is coming out, the new character is coming out May 11th? Yeah. Okay. They it today, so so we'll still get the debut. Then they'll just you know add the character, and then we'll get the character trailer at Combo Breaker. No, that's um hmm. it, like look, look we look might get the, a, a date at Combo Breaker, but well, yeah, a trailer say, date trailer. Tech Showdowns this weekend, they will probably get the reveal. I guess. Oh, yeah, Texas Showdowns. So? Texas Showdowns this weekend. There's no, no, there's nothing else this weekend. All right. My job was canceled this weekend. Woo! So, so. with uh, speaking of reveals, uh, there, was, there was an accidental reveal. Uh, came came from my people in the Middle East. Praise my people, right? Um, Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. Uh, huge, huge leak, I guess you can call it. Mm -hmm. um, I guess there was a presser in Germany or some German event, a uh, German gaming event, and uh, someone got a hold of a lot of footage. I don't know if it was from there, from somewhere else, but uh, we got to see, uh, what is it, five minutes of Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite gameplay yeah. uh, featuring, like, various characters, and uh, it's getting mixed reactions. But, I don't know, me for me personally, I, it looks it looks good. I like it so far. Yeah. Visually, not the best, but I don't give a shit. I, I, mm. I'm I fine with that. I played KOF 14 when it looked like trash, and I still play it, and it still doesn't look like the greatest thing. This game looks good. <laughs> like um, and I'm, it's still early on. They can fix it. I don't care. It just looks... I can't wait to see this game being played by by people. I just really That's like cool. how they kind of simplified a lot of the things that they were working with in the previous Marvel entry. I mean, obviously, mm -hmm. you know, Marvel Three was just chaos incarnate. Um, yeah. This game looks like it's going to be much more. Like it kind of feels. It feels like I'm looking at TVC. Like it feels a little bit more like I'm looking at Tatsuno versus Capcom versus like Marvel. Well, they Marvel added a first Capcom. mechanic. Well, that is also oh, helps. They added Mega Crash. Yeah. <laughs> that is a, that that definitely helps the uh, aesthetic. Um, mm -hmm. Like I, I just, I, I feel like when I'm looking at Marvel Infinite, like it still looks really cool and it looks like it can be hype and everything, and people can go crazy and have their little one-liners and whatnot. And um, but I also think that it looks tangible to people who don't play Marvel. You know. Yes. Yes. You look at Marvel 3 and you don't play Marvel, you're just like, what the fuck? Okay, it's cool. I don't know how he did that, but it's awesome. How do I? Bl how does anybody block this shit? And then you yeah. got commentators telling you, oh yeah, you just can't block that shit forever. Like, why not? Why can't I block it forever? Because it's that random? <laughs> I, I think between the, the longer trailer, the official trailer, the character reveals, we got a lot of information. And the articles that were put out by Derry into the max and surreal over at game informer there's actually a lot of fairly concrete information running around about the game now which mm. a lot of people were like 
where the fuck is it? We, we don't know anything. We got mm. this reveal trailer, like, that the game is actually exists, and then we got nothing. So the people who are willing to take a wait and see, a lot of them are still really happy. They're like, oh, okay, we know more about it. There's always skeptics. Uh, like you said, Gibby, the game doesn't look the best, but I don't know what to say about that. That's just going to be, it's a, it's a personal thing. It's a subjective thing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like I said, I I don't care personally about graphics as long as they're not like glaring in design, like just really terrible layout or, you know, what? Visually hurt to look at. Yeah. <laughs> or, or just like terrible contrast so you just can't see anything. You're like, well, this was a, a travesty. But no, I mean, the game looks interesting. The thing I really want to do now is I just want to play it to see all the game system mechanics. Like, that's what interests mm -hmm. me the most, especially with the gems and all that. Because. Like, the power gem just looked kind of like a hit that wall bounces, but I wonder if there's more to it that, like, is it going to be like a, you know, Slayer-style 6P as well, where it's, like, universal overhead or have some sort of invincibility? In I was wondering that myself, actually. <clears throat> Excuse me. Mm -hmm. Because, yeah, it does just, it looks really simplistic of all the gems we've seen so far. Yeah. And there's got, I feel like there's got to be more layers to it than that. Well, wasn't the power gem the one that we knew the most about before where it gets activated and then you just do away with the wall slam cap? Like, you can just repeatedly wall slam afterwards or ground slam? Yeah, so I was wondering if maybe uh, if you hit someone with that, it would break certain combo rules where, like, you get one wall bounce, but if you use the power gem, obviously you get another wall bounce to pick them up again. Or right. Like so, you know, it's just things like that that I'm super interested in, like... Characters are cool and all, and I would love to see some characters, like, I don't know, main character from Black Tiger or something like that come back. You know, that's not the point. The point is, I really want to understand, as a whole, the system mechanics and what thought process went behind them. Like, that's stuff that really interests me. And that's something I'd like to try for myself. Yeah. yeah. You know, it'd be great if somebody sent a demo to Capcom's premiere podcast. <laughs> us? Us? You mean yes, us, right? us. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, us. just checking. <laughs> No, like, think about it. We have a immaculate pedigree of player history here. You have Gibby, who's, you know, despite his youth, older than dirt. <laughs> despite his youth. And then you have Hell Pockets, who's a master of many games. Tony, you know, a craftsman, thinks outside the box. Uh, you know, I'm a top eight Capcom veteran <laughs> at Evo. And you, and you got Paul. He plays anime games. You'll look at it from a different perspective. Mm-hmm. I think we would be the perfect mix to, you know, offer feedback. I, I, shit, I've played tested multiple games. <laughs> Damn, I like that. Gotta get that resume in at the end. Dude, I have a great resume. <laughs> That's Look at multiple that. games. Ran the gamut, if you will. I'm a KI. Oh. Here, check it out. Let's make this easy. Hey, uh, Capcom in the chat. We've known each other for a long time, right? Uh, you know you know my my storied history with, with fighting games and what I've done for, for you know, other companies. I've, I've tested games. I've helped with balance in some, some issues in some games. And, you know, I'm not the best at it, apparently, but why don't you like hook it up, you know, give us a code, test it. We'll be able to give you guys positive feedback and we can, we can let the public know because who else are people going to listen to? We are the only podcast in the FGC and we are the premier Capcom podcast. You guys should know this. All right. So hook it up. You know, we got this. I will, uh, I'll do you a solid. <laughs> you know what solid I'll do for you. All right. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I got you, homie. Don't worry. That's not as far as I was going with that whole sentiment. Uh, but <laughs> I, I won't turn it away. I suppose if it's going to get somewhere. <laughs> I mean, if they, uh, yeah, if they give I it to us, it's it very interesting. And yeah, I knew uh, exactly what I was talking about. Mm -hmm. but good man, good man. <laughs> I'm really with Tony's line of thinking. That I'm curious to see where the mechanics go and. Hopefully to do something about the visuals, because right now everything seems kind of muted, which is weird. So backwards when you think of a Marvel game, where it's just like everything's colorful, it's shiny, there's fucking space in the background for no reason. Whenever you do a super, shit glows, you know, bright reds, bright, you know, primary colors. And this one just looks like a lot of brown. <laughs> it yeah, looks it like Call weird. of Duty. Like, well, yeah, and you know it, looks, it looks really drab compared to yeah. uh, Marvel 3. And all the stuff that should be bright actually looks washed out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is just kind of weird, because you feel like that has to be an intentional choice. Generally, I would say 
it is because of things like time constraints and possibly budgetary constraints, but we don't know what's going on with that. They well, may the, thing, the thing about it is somebody pointed out how you can just kind of add like a shader to kind of make it look more like Marvel 3, and then you have yeah. contrast now, right? Or you can even go as far as just adding outlines to the character. So it kind of has that sort of comic book look. But as it is right now, it seems like it's supposed to be in line with sort of like the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Which is awful, by the way. Yeah, and then... It, it, as it sounds right now, and I don't mean to say this is a completely negative comparison, but it looks like an NRS game, which is not what I expect to look at when I play a Marvel game. Mm. Like, I'm expecting to look at a Saturday morning cartoon of, like, you know, X-Men the Animated Series, where everyone's in bright yellow blue spandex. Uh, but, I'm sorry to interrupt you really quick. I found out this Saturday there are no more Saturday morning cartoons. What? I am very so, sad. Th this explains why it doesn't look like a Saturday morning cartoon, because it's nothing Nobody but knows what it is anymore. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, thanks like, for depressing I, me. I'm gonna go yeah. walk off my house. Like, fuck this, man. I'm trying to fight action figures over here, and instead it's just like, you know, I'm looking at World at War, but it has Hawkeye in it. <laughs> Not like cool Hawkeye. It's like you know, yeah, it's fucking like this is my jogging Hawkeye. suit Hawkeye. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> my, like my gym clothes Hawkeye. Like your dude's like doing laundry laundry day Hawkeye. It's not cool, man. Like I'm oh like, man, you don't you don't like technology startup Hawkeye? <laughs> Holy shit, he does like a fucking techie. What the fuck? Uh, the haircut, man. That's what's killing me the most. Is I the mean, fucking haircut. That's the thing. That's why everybody thinks it's the Marvel Cinematic Universe is really influencing the art direction. Is because that's the Hawkeye we have right now. Yeah. yeah. So still doesn't well, look exactly like you know cinematic Clint. Right. But yeah, it definitely. Well, let's is wait. Totally drawn from that. Let's wait. The the ultimate test is if they actually are allowed to put some X Men characters in there, and if they're all wearing like fucking black leather fucking body suits, we're fucked. No, no, X Men Three. Dude, we better no. We're not. No, nah, man. Don't say things like that. I don't want to see that. <laughs> like it's a new, exciting direction. They won't even care what they look like. The game is so good, guys, and it's a lot easier to just put them in all black. Gross. I'm just Sorry, saying that if I'm a if I'm a businessman and I'm looking to make a book while saving a book, just put all the enemy, put all the characters in black. Can we talk for a moment about? Like, we're all kind of excited to just see where this game goes, right? Like, they obviously mm -hmm. have a vision for it, and, you know, visuals aside, we're interested to see how the mechanics will play out and how people will do interesting shit with stuff like the Space Jam activation where it puts oh, you in yes. a fucking box. Mm -hmm. The black coffin? Yeah, what's in the box? <laughs> it's an ass whooping. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I am kind of concerned with their business model a bit. The, uh, you know, here's a deluxe edition, and it comes with six DLC characters. You only know one of them. It's like it's, a, it's almost like a Pandora's box. Yeah, it, it is. Like, what's in the box? Huh? <laughs> it well, could be Sigma. Could be Vile. Like... Well, and that's the thing. That's kind of the new business model of games in general. Obviously, Injustice has the same thing. If you get their super special edition, you get is it eight? I think it's eight, including Dark Side. So and, these, and you don't know who they are necessarily. No, you have no idea who anything is. So you're kind of being asked to purchase something sight unseen, like it's that's, just, it's that's that season season uh, pass thing, yeah, man. Yeah, the season pass thing. It's that games have been doing now, and it's it's kind of cool in a certain way. way. Like, I, I, it's all right. shitty in a way because you don't know, and you're sort of buying something that may turn out to be crap, but. I think the entire point of it is to try to get people excited that, hey, we're going to support this game after it comes right, out. Right, right, right. I was going to say that you definitely, when you say season pass, you're thinking at least a year's worth of getting some investment back on this game. And honestly, a lot of people in the chat are kind of pointing this out and it makes sense. It's more fair to think of it as a character pass because with Street Fighter V, it was announced as kind of like a season pass, right? Mm -hmm. But then there was so much content beyond the characters that was not allocated to the people that purchased it that they still had to buy it as a separate thing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that becomes concerning it's like yeah i have to buy separate stages shit i have to buy colors like they finally kind of sorted everything out with them having to buy colors but that was not something that was really included in the season pass mm -hmm. yeah so i think i think just using that term that company's not doing themselves any favor it, it's a character pass now like yeah. Well, yeah i think that uh capcom did that for sf5 season two i think it's called a character pass in season two Okay. 
That's way more fair. Because otherwise, I feel, as a consumer, if somebody told me, it's like, oh, it's a season pass, and then I find out there's a ton of stuff I'm not entitled to, I'd feel completely robbed. I'd be pretty yeah. upset if I didn't get, like, a box that came with, like, cumin and, like, you know, red pepper and stuff like that. <laughs> I need my seasonings. No, that's the seasoning <laughs> pass. Oh, oh, man. <laughs> Yeah, but continue on. Like, I understand that. Yeah, it's it's a little odd, and but I mean, it just feels like this kind of like the climate of games now. And and not that I think that that should be how it is or accepting of it, but it's just. I mean, how much more can we say? And it's, well, it's, what we're talking about here is we're talking about a trust between development companies and the consumers, and the development company is saying, "Trust us, we've got cool things for you. Mm -hmm. Give us thirty five dollars." Now. Yeah. I'm not going to say anybody's breaking that trust, but at the same time, that's a lot to ask for, you know? And yeah, I mean, like, let's, 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 let's put it, let's put it, let's say SNK did that. Let's say SNK did season pass for KOF 14's DLC. Now, thankfully, that they knocked out of the park with that, but given what SNK had basically come out with, you know, before the game actually released, would you buy a season pass for KOF 14? Hmm. I don't know. I mean, I, I personally, I would, but I can see a lot of people being super. I'd be, yeah. yeah, I'd be super. I'd be skeptical. It would be yeah, hard more... to do it because you'd be like, "Well, how much effort did you even put into making this game?" You know, and it's obvious that they put a ton of effort now into it because they started building trust by a adding free patches and stuff, and you know, colors and up visual upgrade and shit. And you'd be like, "Oh hell yeah, I'll buy a season pass for this shit." These guys got my back. Now for Street Fighter Five, maybe you know people were already excited for, it and they're like, "Oh yeah, Capcom's cool." They're going to give us new characters. We'll take the season pass. I bought the season pass, and, you know, I thought it was great. I probably should have read the fine print that said I wasn't going to get stages because, Lord, was I pissed. Well, I mean, I was a little upset that I didn't get, like, some costumes and stuff, but it, it's like, what? Like, I thought I, I, thought I got I it. Oh, sorry. Keep going. Or, or, or not even just that. Like, even if, like, I didn't have to, like, go play through survival to get all the colors, you know? Like, even you wouldn't have to give me additional content, but just give me the content that's there right now. You know what I mean? I don't know. Uh, I think it'd be cool if we start to see compendiums. Yeah, now that's something that I thought that they could start with Infinite because it seems like they are interested in, like, you know, doing not the same thing over again, but they are interested in possibly building something with that. Dude, I they could do it for Street Fighter Five right now. If next week they said you could buy blank amount of fight in-game fight money, which will allow you to get, you know, stages, colors, and stuff like that, or even just sell costumes with it, for X dollars and this much will go to tournaments. I'd buy that shit. Yeah. I think a lot of people would. I think a lot of people would be happy to do it. Uh, doesn't, uh, or last year they did that, where if you purchase, like, the stage. The, the, the CPT stuff does that. Yeah. So th they don't do that with the normal stuff? Not as far as I know. Okay. So when they announce the CPT stuff for this year, it's like that. It's you get the two costumes they showed, there will be the Knuckle Dude Design costume. And the CPT stage, along with uh, a CPT color for everybody in the game, which is cool. Okay. And then a certain percentage. I think that it was like, man, I'm not. I'm gonna, I'm gonna mess these percentages up, so I'm not gonna say. But a certain percentage will go to the prize pot, and a certain percentage of the funds goes to the production end. So he pays people who actually work production. Mm. Yeah, cool. I mean. There's definitely a lot more things that are going to be expanded upon, I believe. Uh, and not necessarily so immediate, but like, like I was saying earlier, like the, the climate for this kind of business is, is changing dramatically. Yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah. And that's why I don't, get, I don't get harsh on them about season passes because it's just like, hey, if you're going to offer it and people are going to buy it, why the <laughs> fuck wouldn't you offer it? You know, like why? Yeah. If somebody's going to give me 30 bucks for something that only includes five characters, am I just going to be like, no, I'm not doing that. That's unscrupulous. Fuck you, man. This guy was giving me 30 bucks for characters. <laughs> well, I think you also have to look at it like, let's look at it like KOF. Okay, KOF and Guilty Gear are two examples of people who don't really, haven't really done the season pass model yet. When new characters came out, how much were the KOF characters? I think at first uh, for, release for it was... KOF, yeah, KOF there was $6, or you could buy all four of them for 18 Okay, and Guilty Gears are about, if I remember correctly, they're about 6 bucks. I thought so, there were eight on gear. Is it? It might be. You might no, that, be, was, it might be. that was that was Blaze Blue. Oh yeah. Oh, oh okay. okay. Oh okay. The other. Yeah. The other. Right. But the, I'll say six to eight over the years is where we kind of 
So, you know, you're talking five characters, 30 bucks, that's six bucks a character. It's the same thing. People get mad about it because it's a lot of money at once, but it's really the same thing. Yeah. And so I think they have a chance to, like, you know, do something really cool with Marvel Infinite, you know? I think that in terms of, like, you know, how they can approach this package deal, you know, they can do compendiums. They can definitely add characters that people want. You know, we have no idea who's in it, so there's yeah, a chance to do something really nice here. That's actually something I want to touch on before we kind of, like, waste an entire show on Marvel Infinite. Um, <laughs> is with the DLC, I really hope they knock it out of the park. Because I'll admit, I was really hesitant to think that SNK was going to wow us with the DLC characters, mm -hmm. right? Like, yeah. first first we thought, oh, there's only three of them, and then we kind of started looking at the shadows, and we're like, oh, there's, like, a secret fifth leg. Maybe there's another character. Maybe there's four. <laughs> Ultimately, there was. And it was, what? Fan favorite after fan favorite, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, I can't think of anyone that can tell me, or that has told me, I'm disappointed with the four fucking characters that got released. Somebody got a character that they've been wanting to play for a while. I'm sure, I'm sure of it. Yeah, it's like Rock being the final release perfect. Like, who didn't want Rock back besides Gibby? <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, I, I do want to say, I was looking forward to Yamazaki, didn't care for Rock. I'm not big on Yamazaki because he doesn't play like old, old KO. Basically what I want, but I like Rock. Rock yeah, is very you... simple and basic. He's, he's, I, I was hoping he was good. I didn't expect that I'd be using him, but here I am using him. Yeah, he's a solid character, and you're doing well with him. And yeah. they, they did a great job with the DLC. The thing that I'm hesitant to trust Capcom on on this is that the cast that we've gotten for Infinite so far is rehashed for the latter term. Like, we got Ultron, that's new. We got X, that's fantastic. We know Sigma's coming. That's great. Mm -hmm. But the Marvel side is just like, we've seen this shit. Like, when you think about what we got for MVC3... Or even Ultimate. Like, remember those reveals? It's like, yo, you can play as Iron Fist. You can play as Ghost Rider. Like, this shit's wild. I never yeah. would have expected these characters. I'm really hoping that the ones we do get for DLC, like the stuff we don't know for the Marvel side, or even some of the remaining Capcom characters, I hope they really do something that impresses like, us. Dig deep, you know? like Yeah, it, it's like, if they tell me, it's like, hey, you can play as Wesker. I'd be like, okay. Cool. I, <laughs> so, I, I know I'm... Probably not the. I'm probably not the only one who thinks this, but I, I also don't want to say that everybody thinks this. In terms of, man, I don't give a shit about Hulk. Man, I don't give a shit about Thor, and I don't care about Chris Redfield either. I'm sorry. I, <laughs> I just don't. Uh, and Chris Swolfield, please. Mm -hmm. That Resident Evil Six <laughs> sorted it out, Chris. The oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and I'm sure more people are excited about Chris than they are about Hulk or Thor. And I also know that Hulk and Thor are going to be in the game because of the Avengers in the cinematic universe right now, how important that is to Marvel. Mm -hmm. But God, those characters are fucking boring to me. And I hate how they did it in Marvel 3. And he looks the same. Yeah, fuck it. Well, um, that's the thing, though. I, oh, good, well, you know, I just think that, like, so right now from what we can see, there's a lot of similarities in characters. But I feel like that's probably only going to be to the surface because this is a new game and they're probably going to address, like, Hey, this shit was kind of whack. Maybe yeah. we should touch it up, uh, but we'll not just gut it completely from its core. You know, we'll, we'll make what works, and then we'll see how it kind of exists. And which is another reason why I want to see the system mechanics for this game because I want to see how is it going to work in the context of how this game. Works. Yeah, definitely starving for some mechanics and like some more in-depth stuff in video yeah. form. But I know Derry did some talking on that too. So that's if you haven't checked out Dar Derry's IGN article, you know, I would definitely have a look at that. Hmm. Um, if you want one that's a bit more fleshed out, go look at the Ian one. Ian one's also good. Um, yeah. And, you know, that'll, that'll get you set. Uh, I just wanted to say, in terms of characters, uh, how you were saying you don't care for the Marvel characters, Paul. Uh, yeah. Right now, I'm not, not impressed by them. Mm -hmm. I, me personally, uh, I'm not looking forward to any of the Marvel characters. I'm not a comic guy. So it doesn't really, I don't really care for them. I'm looking forward to Capcom stuff. And I, I really want to see who else they put in. Breath of Fire 3 Ryu, please. Three? No, man, Gar. Gar. Uh, that's all right, too. Captain uh, Captain Commando. Let's do it. Yeah, people have seen what Captain Commando back. And obviously, after... Almost, like, it's got to be at least a decade people have been asking for this, but Gene. Oh, yeah. yeah. People want Gene, man. People like, want is there, and is there... up about Gene. <laughs> <laughs> is there of hearing about it. I don't 
Oh, God, I don't care. Five people played God Hand. Five. What? All I mean, five of them. And they have now extended <laughs> into Godhood. Yeah. Like, what if they go with, like, the sick bait, where it's like, you know, they have a character trailer and somebody yells out Gene, and you're like, oh, shit, it's there, and then it's Dark Phoenix again? No! <laughs> no, no. That would just be cruel. I couldn't, I can't co-sign on that. The, the, the fun thing now with Marvel Infinite, the game comes out in about five and a half months. Mm-hmm. So that's a very short window uh, from now till then. And they haven't revealed all the characters, and obviously there's DLC that we don't know about, which the, the rumor was it's going to be the X-Men cast, you're going to have Wolverine, you're going to have uh, Magneto, and a few other people. Um, I'm curious to see is how they, they deal with all this now. Because Street Fighter, what they do at events, we're assuming E3, which is coming, what, next month? Is going to have some yeah. big big announcement. Uh, they could cool. announce some Marvel stuff at Combo Breaker. True. And, or their CEO and there's Evo. Like what? How how are they going to do this? And also from what I've seen, it's not Capcom releasing the info publicly. The Marvel Twitter account releases info before yeah. Capcom releases info. Well, so we do. It seems so like Marvel has control over the how the information gets out. Oh boy. So that's very interesting that you say that because I feel like they also have a somewhat sway in gameplay because. I remember he was here and they were like, Iron Man's different now. And now he's way more about zoning, way more about using his suit. And I'm just like, well, that's not exactly how he fights in the movies. But in the games, he was like crazy, rushed down, in your ass, beat the shit out of you kind of character. So it's yeah, like, he had punch lasers. Yeah, yeah. So I'm just thinking like, I wonder if Marvel was like, why is he going in front, up and punching people? Why is he pressing light punch, medium punch, light kick, heavy kick, forward jump? You think he's all projectiles now? Well, that's what Why it sounds like. Why does he have a launcher? He's fucking Batista. Yeah. So, I feel like in in that kind of sense, they're just like, this character has to do this. This character has to do that. You can kind of do this stuff. Whatever. This is fine. But we can't be having Iron Man doing combos, like, rush down like this. Yeah, we're slugging yeah, it out like a wrong. common street No, tough. no. I, I kind of I see what Tony's getting at, because they definitely went out of their way to say, it's like, oh, he has this entire new arsenal of weapons, right? Like, yeah. smarter, like smarter than smart bombs, like different lasers, all this shit. It's no longer Karate Iron Man that we're used yeah. to. Yeah. It's actually, you know, like, Marvel Universe, I've got rockets inside my laser shooters, kind of. Yeah, exactly. So I feel like it's going to be more more on that front. And that's going to be different because, obviously, Iron Man's been in these games since Marvel Super Heroes. So... Yeah. Well, that's a long time. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know, man. Well, before we move on, I would like to see what character from Capcom's side you guys would all like to see. In Tenkai! Damn, you, right. were really, you were really I really there. want that character. He's fucking sick. And nobody played Dawn of Dreams. It was the last fucking... <laughs> last Oni Musha game we got, and it was sick was as like, fuck. I don't even know who that is when you said it's, it. It's basically Samanosuke from the the earlier uh, Oni Musha games, but he's a monk, so he'd shit with that instead of a sword. Mmm... Cool. Yeah. I didn't play the games. Oh, I played the first one. I remember. Yo, wait. We we talked about this a few months ago, and if I remember right, uh, fuck. Uh, go on. I forgot the name of the character. Or the wraith. That's what I wanted. The wraith. Yeah, I think that was his name from Slam Masters. Oh, yo, uh, the uh, uh, what, the one wrestler that was just like. The Grim Reaper looking one, right? Yeah. 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 Is, is the one, is he, are you talking about the original Slime Master or the sequel? Uh, I think it's in both. Maybe he's only in Ring of Destruction. I think it's only in Ring of Destruction. Yeah, I was going to say, because there's nobody who really looks that out of sorts in the original. They all mostly just look like wrestlers in the first game. I oh think my God. pick from the last yeah, time. Yeah, it is the uh, Yeah. Okay. My pick from the last time and still the same pick is Ashura. Definitely. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I think, I don't remember who I picked the first time, but I would like to see old, old Capcom character, like, like Black Tiger or something like that, you know? That so, would be really cool. Oh, Sagat. I don't my, know how uh, fit in the context of this game, though. Yeah. My, my pick would be Little Nemo, but <laughs> he seems super unlikely, so... Well, isn't he public domain now? Yeah, he's definitely public domain. But that, that doesn't mean you couldn't have Yeah, it, but... I just don't think they would do it, even if they could do it, is kind of my thing. Uh, if, if you want to go something more recent, 
Uh, probably Vile. I think mm. Vile has a strong chance of being in there, yeah. So, yeah, that's another thing I was wondering. Since we're going to have X and Sigma, it makes me think, like, obviously we have a lot of Avengers characters, but are they really going to maybe try and jump out to, like, a bunch of lots of smaller Capcom things? Or are they going to maybe try and flesh out certain universes, you know? Or are they just going to be like, by the way, yeah, we got Vile and we got, like, I don't know, Axel in the game. We'll get real mad. But, uh, <laughs> you know, but, but a lot of X characters. I can see them using Axel over Vile. Like, I, I hate to say it, but I can see Axel in this over Vile. You can have a triangle jump. God damn it! Yep. <laughs> mm -hmm. Axel would be cool if you could like uh, X copy. Yeah, that'd be, be cool. Uh, <laughs> I mean, that's, that's a really good question. Like, how far into the edges of their universes are they willing to go to? Like, we we've never gotten like a Star Gladiator representative besides Hayato in MVC two. Yeah, or uh, what is it called? Kikaya, whatever. Uh, Tech Romancer. What yeah. Oh, Tech Romancer oh, yeah. Characters in there. Make him a giant. Yeah. <laughs> and there's there's been rumors of a Power Stone character. Oh, that would be sick, especially with all these gems around. Yeah. So. Yeah, and uh, like what Chris was saying earlier, Breath of Fire character. There's also been rumors of that, which is why uh, I keep saying Gar. Yeah, I would love to see Gar. That'd be cool. That'd be cool. I think it'd be a Ryu we, though. It's probably gonna be Ryu, so they can DLC costume you, and you can pick whatever you know Ryu you want to play as. Yeah. Well, man, they could just put... The other turns into the Kaiser Dragon. <laughs> like, Nina is pretty much another staple of the game. Yeah, she can be just like his assist or some shit. Nina is a healer. Why don't you put uh, what's her name, Momoko, Momo, one or the other? I forgot. She's got a gun. Uh, the girl with the, uh -huh. like, the the telescope that's also a bazooka. Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yes. See. <laughs> oh, so, man. Speaking of weird characters, uh, so Eunice is about to be a console thing, huh? Yes. Anthony, you know, you are the Eunice god. Uh, I would like <laughs> to think I was. <laughs> I mean, you you lost to, uh, to Hagoda. You know, there's no shame in that. VCR. Yeah, there's no shame. Hagoda, no. Hagoda is a god as well, but I mean, he's not I, as godly as he is. I, I lost on a really terrible bet, kind of. Where, oh. No, because like, I was just like, we were both about to die. No health on both of us, and I'm just like, I got Vorpal. I'm gonna dash forward, immediately chain shift, and then block whatever's coming my way. Chain shift did not happen, and I was fucking like, "Oh no!" So it Top literally was inputs, next hit man. mattered. It was it was some high tiny versus punk kind of going on. The 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 prequel, uh, but yeah, with Eunice coming out, uh, what is it? July twenty first on PS4 and PS3. Uh, on top of that, we're getting new character Andu. It uses a martial arts that's so old it doesn't have a name, but it looks kind of like uh, Baji Kwan kind of. So you, hold on, you mean to tell me we're finally getting a Tetsu uh, I hope we are. I, I it really could be. I, he's got a, I think he has like a. They say he's gonna have like a small move list. Yeah. So the other thing about this character is apparently um, his special ability is that I think he gets stronger as you interrupt other people's strings. Like blockchain. He's stuff. like mash DP. So, oh, all yeah. so what you're saying is we just mash to win? <laughs> Kinda. Yeah. And he's he's also, gotta... This sounds like your character, Anthony. He's perfect. <laughs> also, also, he's very, very simple from what I hear as well. That he's like a beginner character too. We're like, you want to play some uh, under night? We'll play this character. Mash to win. I don't know. That this I could be wrong, but it sounds interesting to me. And he uses moves that I like visually. So I mean, I'm definitely gonna give him a shot. Uh, along with that, isn't there supposed to be another character? So yeah, yeah. there was a Japan. Yes, yeah. two, two characters. Which I'm assuming they don't mean Mika. Well, no, no, no. no, no. Are... They, they they mean beyond the cast. That's yeah. Right. So obviously yeah. the uh, the first one everybody immediately said was Wagner. <laughs> Where oh, is Erica Wagner? Wagner. <laughs> <laughs> The Erica Wagner, you know, <laughs> booster group, which Alex is a card carrying member of. It feels I'm, like I'm every, also the president. <laughs> it feels like every NA player is now about this, especially since Enkidu's in now. It's just everyone's like, all right, okay, give me Wagner. Like, we like, need where, Wagner. Where? We need Wagner. I like, gotta agree. I don't see why it would. Why would they wait at this point? You know, like, you know why so I think they would wait at this point. You go honestly want to know why I think they would wait at this point? Uh, no, why? Think, think think about. Think other than the console characters that we got when when Uniel first came out, what were some of the two characters we saw first? 
we saw Elton and Akoski. How are we knowing this extra character isn't another guest character? Oh, they're finally the Skullgirls guest character? Yeah, or something. Big man. It's gonna be yeah. Beowulf. It's Beowulf. Oh or, my I god. I think be... about it. They work with Arc System Works now, too. So, you know, you could be like, oh, by the way, you know, Ragnar got deleted from existence, but now he's. <laughs> 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 you know, I, who knows? Like, honestly, at this point, it's, I, I expect. You know, this. I missed. Have they said whether console version is going to rebalance the game? Oh, it should be. I think, I think it's if it's like the last time, yeah. Well, if they add new characters like that, maybe they, they will. Because isn't Phonon, like, ridiculous in the arcade version? Oh, yeah. She's like uh, No bad matchups, I believe. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Not like not like super overwhelming, but zero bad matchups. That's uh, still pretty overwhelming. Yeah, well, yeah, but not like, not like any 6-4. Six, six, so she's got a lot of, like, okay matchups in her favor. Yeah. Well, cool. on the other hand, uh, Yaki has some really... Fuck that shit. <laughs> Really busted <laughs> matchups, but, but yeah, he does have some bad matchups. Yeah, I was gonna say like Yaki is like really polarizing now, right? No, for the most part, he just kind of clowns you. But there's a couple <laughs> characters that get past him, like uh, well, because before think... his his demons were like Merkava and like Wald. They just kind of laughed at his ass. Well, I think I know Wald still does, and I think Merkava probably still got his numbers. So I mean, if you're a Wald or Merkava player and you're worried about top tier Yaki, don't worry about that. At the <laughs> same breath, though, I believe Phonon absolutely destroys Wald. Or something oh, like that'd that. make perfect sense. That would make sense. Yeah. So you take the go with the bad, and you look at the new characters. Play and Seth. Like, all right, maybe it's time to pick someone that actually can move on the screen. Don't play Seth. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Don't play Seth. Seth's top three he's now. Top like, three, man. He, what? He's yes. in the top three ball pit. <laughs> he's ridiculous now. <laughs> no, this game is weird. I have not. It is. Hey, 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 hey. Dog. Dog. Akatsuki's good. As okay, a, as a. Good. <laughs> <laughs> As a Carmine yeah. player, Seth has always been good. So, yeah, you guys yeah. talking about all these characters? I'm not. I'm not feeling this. Why don't you guys just uh, make it easy? Play Biken. Oh. Biken is a better character available right now. If you have PlayStation Plus, you can get Rev Two demo for free. Is that so, the demo only on PS4 right now? Or yes, it it's, it's only right going now. to be on PS4. Yeah. Uh. The other annoying thing is that people found out that if your system ever goes offline, the demo mm -hmm. immediately turns off. What? Yep. You can't yeah. access the demo offline. I unplugged oh. my cable and yep. So hopefully Arxis fixes it. Dude. Uh, otherwise, we're going to have to be online for tournaments. And that's Dude, we doing. had a whole fucking night plan around that at the bar afterwards. Mm. Well, Gotta connect so, the bar that's yeah, gonna, it's going to be really weird. We're going to see the first, the first example of how this works on Friday, I think. Because Texas Showdown is not replacing their Revelator tournament. They are running a Rev 2 side event. I believe it's Friday, free entry, $100 to the winner. We're going to see how this goes. Because okay. if mm. the system starts just drawing offline and matches, dude, people are just going to be like, nope, fuck this. We're waiting until the game comes out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, man, that sucks. There was, uh, there was actually a statement, or a pseudo statement by Axis that was surprised by that fact that it went offline. And it just booted, just basically booted you out of the fucking game, right? Hmm. And they're kind of, you know, looking into it. Yeah. So, oh, okay. Knows? Well, maybe. I don't see why, and well, hmm. I mean, I do see why. Piracy, <laughs> I could see that possibly, maybe, I don't, I, I, mean, I don't know if there's any technology. I wouldn't put it past the pirates already to be able to, like, you know, dupe shit. I honestly, the only immediate reason I can think of is somebody keeping the demo after it turns off. Right, yeah. Which, yeah. Is, which is essentially pointless, but... Or the other well, thing... The demo seems like it's the full game. Yeah, it's it's everything but the, you know, the, all the story-related stuff, all the... Yeah. If you... If all the fighter stuff is there, because all the characters are there, training mode's there, versus mode's there. I'm pretty sure you can, like, go into the data and unlock stuff. Like, not story mode, because the game doesn't seem... It, it's only 3.8 gig download. I don't know if story mode fits in that. But I'm pretty sure it's no, just like... No, I don't think it will. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's just like all the content for the game outside of story mode. That you, and very good chance hackers could just get into it. Mm, like trials and arcade mode. Yeah, yeah, which is why I think uh, online was disabled. Or the other, disabled. The other thing might be, it might be need to be connected to online to basically check if you're still a PS Plus. Because, you know, there are the... Yeah. The, like, two, the week membership or two-week membership that comes... Oh, yeah. So it, it might have something to do with needing to verify whether you have PS Plus. That's a guess. I don't know. It could be completely wrong. True. But I mean, like even like look at like PT and stuff like that. They can actually put an expiration date on these. Uh, yeah. 
It's true. So, the only thing I can think of is like somehow just changing the internal clocks good enough, you know? If you like come by every month and just roll it back a month or something to that effect. But I I mean machines are a bit more sophisticated than that, but then again, uh-huh. the PSN is actually very terrible, so <laughs> I mean my brother was looking for the demo and the way I found the demo was I saw Alex was playing it and I'm just like, Alright, cool, like, he's playing it, this makes it way easier for me. I can see what game he's playing. I'm gonna go download it. How how long did it take you to find it, Alex? Um so I noticed immediately when I woke up that people were having that issue. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know who you know Patient Zero was that found it, but it looks like the easiest way to do it is just get it at a sense store or on the website and then just download it to your PS4. Yeah, which is what, what I ended up doing. Do. That's what I did. I got it. I was just on my phone when I saw the tweet go up that it's out. And I just uh, I, everything I do on PSN, I just do on my phone. It's easier. I mean, to the, the web PSN store is a hundred percent better than the one on your console. Yeah. Oh yeah. Wait. The, the console one, I, I don't know if it's the search is just shitty or what, but it does not always work. You can't yeah, find things. It's well, bad. So so here's the other thing that I had. Sorry. Um, one time I bought something off the web store, and then I had no idea how to download it on my console. Mm-hmm. So I was like, all right, now now that I got it, where do I go to get it? And I look at my library, and I'm like, why don't I see it here? What's going on? That's. that's yeah, I'll, I'll actually admit that with the PlayStation 4. Um, like, if you don't immediately press the download the console now button after you make a purchase, finding it on your console itself is the most obtuse shit. Where is it, even? I don't know. I, I found it I, once, because I downloaded a bunch of, like, the KOF team, like, uh, PS4 themes. Yeah. It's somewhere in settings. Like, oh, God. It's somewhere you wouldn't think to look. Like, it's not intuitive at all. Oh, yeah. I, I think for when I got the themes, because I got a wrap of the wrapper when they gave away for free or something like that. You, I had, like, I was looking through the store, I was looking through my library, I was looking through my purchases, I'm like, why can't I find it anywhere? And then I think I actually just had to go straight up to themes, and it's like, here's a theme that you own, but you don't have downloaded. I'm like, yeah. this is nowhere where I expected it to be. Why wasn't it in the store? Yeah, like or in your thing. library, or in recent downloads, right? Like, exactly. nothing makes any sense. It's but... useless. There's a download history? Mm, there yeah, is, but there that's is. not entirely correct, I think. Yeah. There is, but it only looks back. It doesn't actually care about anything that you purchase. It just having down. Yeah. Okay. Uh, shit, this sucks. So, uh, everyone's playing it, though, and they seem to enjoy it. Uh, I I played it, streamed it for a bit, um, played Biken. I was kind of disappointed to see that she's not, you know, old Biken, but it's fine, whatever. I played Oswald. Oswald is, is pretty good. Uh, they gave him a cell phone. That's that's cool. Dude, Oswald is really, really surprising when you have him in your hands. Just because yeah. everything feels... Like, he literally is the imaginarium of a character where it's like, oh, I wonder if I can do this, and the answer is... Yeah. Like, all the stuff that he could do with his wall scroll, or like his... Yeah, wall scrolls. Uh, his fucking scrolls to, like, jump around the screen. <laughs> I mean, they're wall scrolls. There's wall scrolls. Yeah, they're wall scrolls. Uh, <laughs> It's an anime. Got Cowboy Bebop on one of them. Yeah. Stars on the other. Yeah. Damn, he's got the trigun too. He's got the trifecta there. Mm-hmm. Yep. But he, he gets the a, it's like he gets fantastic normals. He gets really unique mix-up options. He's got really interesting tools, and they're all satisfying. Like nothing about answer felt stiff or weird. Uh, even his his. Uh, Izuna drop like that thing's really cool because if you do yeah, it from a if you do it from a run it goes almost coast to coast. Wow! Mm-hmm. And you could do it in the air. Yeah. And uh, one thing I like about him, and I love it's not him, it's a, it's a mechanic. I hate this mechanic in games, or I hate not having this mechanic in games. So you have motions like he has a motion that's back forward punch. Okay? Yeah. If you hold back, press forward punch, you get forward punch. You don't get the move. I love that. You have to do back forward punch immediately. Like you have to do back and forward punch immediately. Yeah, so it's not a charge. I love that back forward motion. Yeah, it's so nice. When I did when, when I saw it, I'm like, ah, shit. And when I tested, it, I'm like, oh yes, I like this. <laughs> no I'm not accident. gonna play the character because the the characters. Oh, that that's that's a fucking Steve character. <laughs> Thank you for all of you. Yo, okay, who, who so don't know who I want to know. I need to know because Clockwork always said he would play Guilty Gear, but he thought Chip was whack. So oh. I need to know if Clockwork's going to play Answer. This, this definitely is more of a Clockwork character than mm. Chip is. 
Like in every which way. <laughs> yeah. Better good day. I, I think I think clock's a liar though. I'm just saying. No, I mean, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. You, like, look, like, I'm I'm saying it's more of a clockwork character. Am I saying clockwork's gonna play him? Fuck no. I'm probably never gonna see clockwork touch an anime game in his life. But you know, if we went back in time and this was like 2002 clockwork, we might see him touch, you know, AC or some shit. I don't know. Fuck. <laughs> that wasn't out in 2002. He was in the future. Yeah. Right? Oh uh, well, he is clockwork. Yeah. He works with clocks. And he's going to I can't so, remember which version of Dizzy. Like it might have been Slash. Uh, I don't know. So we got a bunch of fighting games coming out in the next few months. Uh, and Justice was like I guess they announced all, the entire cast of that. Joker was officially revealed. People will seem to be disappointed with it. But um, uh, Joker, Joker is from you know comics here in the states. But there are comics, manga in Japan that feature gigantic robots and animes and shit like Gundam. Gundam is coming to America, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I feel like that transition was a stretch, but I'll give mm-hmm. you points for the. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Anime, cartoons are the same thing, you know. Anime comics, is cartoons. Manga. Yeah. Yeah. See, it's a word. Yeah. I did a good job <laughs> giving myself a high five. Wait, DDP yeah. self high five? Mm-hmm. No, I'm, I'm not. I'm not DDP. I, I'm not that level. I gotta start that yoga though. That's gonna help out. It could. So, uh, what system is it for? PS4. Gundam is coming for PS4. And it's gonna have. It's it's a four player game. This one, right? The, it's actually up to six now. Yeah. Jesus. Fucking yeah. Christ. Okay. Yeah, we in this bitch. So, this is actually a pretty monumental thing for a lot of people who followed this series. This series been going on since 2001. And we're finally getting a game. Mm. Which begs a couple questions in my mind. Like, we've always talked, people have always talked about how this has to be a huge rights issue, which is why we aren't getting it. Did they just kind of snap that all up, or was this never as big of an issue as anybody thought? Well, and no, they actually, just didn't want to sell the game because they didn't think it would sell here. You just Most made me think that. about something. You just made me think about something I hadn't thought of until just this moment. Um, like, if we think about rights issues, the Gundam series wasn't, if you remember, it wasn't available on like Crunchyroll for a while, right? It was just yes. on its own thing. I think it was like Funimation. Might They've basically right. merged at this point. Mm. And there's all the Gundam series are on Crunchyroll now. Like, I wonder if Funimation eased up on their rights. Like, instead of having a chokehold, oh. they're more willing to work with people now. Could be. <laughs> Because it wasn't until this year that we got, like, pretty much every Gundam series that's been available on Funimation is now on Crunchyroll. Hmm. Wait, is Gundam Wing there? Yeah, I think it is? Oh, yeah. Time to go back and watch really bad anime that I watched when I was 16. Oh, you will not be <laughs> I don't. I don't plan to enjoy it. <laughs> nostalgia is not kicking. Oh, yeah, no. All 49 episodes of Gundam Wing are in there. Oh, I'm hell yeah. It. I can't I'm wait to really regret it. Why the fuck would you do this? Because <laughs> I plan on regretting it. Oh my god. So, uh, since we're on the subject of Gundam, uh, one of the one of the people who helps support the Gundam community uh, here in SoCal, and I guess all, uh, he, he helped promote it and everything, do a lot of stuff, was uh, uh, Commando from IE Battlegrounds. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's a good friend of ours. Dignity thing, you know, that's how I said, right? He's... Uh, he works for X, going back and forth between Singapore, right? Singapore or the Philippines? Philippines. Uh, between SoCal and the Philippines. Right, right now, uh, he's going through times. Uh, his father recently passed away, and he's here in the States trying to uh, handle all, like, all that stuff for his family. And he's asking the community for help with uh, paying for funeral expenses. And I know not everyone can help, but any little bit counts. I mean, uh, even just Chris, written, uh, yeah. 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 Uh, um, if you need it again, here it is. I'll put the link in the Discord or in the Team Spooky chat right now for everybody. Um, he helps one dollar helps, two dollars help, penny uh, is penny. Yeah, yeah, yeah just word, signal please. boosting. Yeah. So the, the, this is a man that put a lot of SoCal streaming on his back in order to provide mm-hmm. the best content. And is definitely someone I expected. Him. So, if you could help him out, I already threw in some money for him. Uh, but they could really just use anything they could get. Mm-hmm. 
Also, apparently, uh, Gundams are not robots. What the hell's wrong with people? <laughs> They're mobile suits, like the men's robots. warehouse. You mean oh. I can wear them to my job interview? <laughs> yeah. Mm. Mm. Just for the job that you want, not the job that you have. Yeah. If I dress for the job that I had, <laughs> guns everywhere. <laughs> I didn't say that. Who said that shit? Yeah, I was about to say. Let's not go there. Right? Mobile yeah. suits. <laughs> Cut it. So, uh, so just, just so everyone knows, uh, I, I put it up on Twitter's. Today was a one-hour show. We're about to close out right now. No questions. No guests. We'll be doing that uh, next week. Yeah, we'll, we'll, the we'll take care of week. things next week. We've got we've got things that we all need to take care of this week, so we got to close it out early. And that's fine. Be sure to you know stick around, follow. We'll probably have a guest on next week. I don't know. Some of these guests like to show up last minute without telling me until the last second. So we'll see it's fighting happens. game people. They're not good with plans. <laughs> yeah, and uh, yeah, follow us on Twitter, SDR. Follow all the people here. All the names are right there. The monkey looking thing is uh, Sanchez or. Um, Black and MacGyver. He's a I have black and white camera. Yeah. Right. This lying. This lying ass. Nineteen fifty television. I've seen his. I've seen his camera. His camera is just all anime. That's that's all it is. It's, <laughs> oh, that's even it's, worse. It's just just like, it makes you all sparkly. Yeah. You just need to get one of those. Uh, what's your man calls it? It's the rig. Yeah. No, dude. The last time the Gibby, the Gibby, one person did see my camera. It was actually just pointed at a one over. <laughs> One one forty four is heavy wings or heavy arms. <laughs> Fucking mm. no, it was point, it was pointed at a little girl. That was Nico next to me. Yep. Uh. Right? <laughs> cool. Yeah. <laughs> you keep saying that to yourself, right? This is a slippery slope. I'm not a fucking eight foot tall black man. I am. I mean... a I, I definitely agree with that. Yeah, I, I can verify. I've seen them both in the same room. Yeah, we're mm. different people. Mm. All right. Anybody got any last thoughts before we get out of here? Uh, no, not the moment. I think we're good. All right. Thanks once again, everybody, for listening to another episode of Super Desperation Radio. Sorry it's a little short this week, but we got to go. So from everybody here, good night and good luck.